Repair Clinic makes fixing things easy. With millions of replacement parts available on our website and the help you need to do the repair yourself. Since we encourage you to perform this procedure safely, a warning icon will appear when you should use caution. Before you begin the installation of the package terminal air conditioner, refer to the installation manual to confirm you have all the necessary parts and accessories. The electrical supply for the unit should be 208 or 230 volts at 60 Hz. A single 20 amp branch circuit is required. The recommended wall opening size for the unit and wall sleeve is 42 and a quarter inches wide and 16 and 1 8 inches high. The unit and sleeve can be installed flush against the floor or supported by a subbase if the sleeve extends 4 inches or more into the room. If a subbase is used, the bottom of the wall sleeve must be at least 3 and a quarter inches above the floor, but no higher than 5 and a half inches. To assemble the wall sleeve, place the bottom panel on a flat, level surface. Align the left side panel with the left bottom panel slot and fully insert the panel until the locking tabs engage. Repeat to secure the right side panel. Now align the top panel with the two side panels and push down until the locking tabs engage. Position the sleeve in the wall so the bottom panel drain holes are extended past the exterior of the wall. The sleeve must extend at least 5 eighths of an inch beyond the building exterior to assure proper drainage and extend at least a quarter inch into the room for proper weatherproofing. If applicable, align the subbase under the wall sleeve. Measure the gap from the screw hole in the side of the subbase to the wall. Bend the two adjustable side panels at the appropriate slot positions to match the gap measurement. Align the side panels inside the subbase and secure with the attachment screws. If you're using a subbase with an electric receptacle, be sure to shut off the power supply before connecting the power wires. Unthread the screws to detach the junction box cover from the sub-base. Remove one of the rear knockout plugs. Use an appropriately sized UL listed or CSA approved conduit connector to connect the power supply cable conduit to the junction box. Feed the power supply wires through the junction box and secure the conduit connector. Now join the black wires together and secure them using an approved UL listed wire nut. Do the same to secure the two red wires together. as well as the two green grounding wires. Realign the junction box cover and secure it with the screws.
reposition the sub base against the wall under the sleeve. Align the front edge of the sleeve with the sub base mounting brackets and mark where the screw holes should go. Use a 1 8 inch drill bit to drill the two screw holes in the sleeve. Thread the screws to secure the sleeve to the sub base, but avoid over tightening. Confirm that the wall sleeve is level from side to side. You can extend or retract the two legs on the sub base to help level the sleeve. Next, confirm that the sleeve is tilted back one quarter bubble to allow for proper condensate drainage. Again, you can adjust the sub base legs to achieve this. Once properly positioned, determine where the wall is aligned with the sides of the sleeve, then mark two holes on each side of the sleeve, approximately four inches from the top and four inches from the bottom. Use a 3 16 inch drill bit to drill the four pilot holes. Use number 10 one inch screws or the appropriate fasteners for the wall construction to secure the sleeve to the wall. Never drill or install fasteners through the top or bottom of the sleeve. Next, prepare the grill baffle assembly for installation by partially threading the four mounting screws into the appropriate holes on the rear of the grill. Do not thread the screws flush against the grill, but allow the head of each screw to extend out approximately one eighth of an inch. With the louvers pitched downward, tilt the grill to insert it through the wall sleeve. Align the mounting screws with the keyhole slots on the back of the wall sleeve and pull the grill downward. Now tighten the four screws to secure the grill to the sleeve. Apply sealant, caulking, or an equivalent weatherproofing material around both the exterior and interior perimeter of the sleeve to create a total air and water seal. If using a subbase, you will need to detach the subbase to weatherproof the area below the sleeve. You're now ready to prepare the air conditioning unit itself for installation. Unthread the shipping screw securing the vent door. Remove the front panel by pulling the bottom of the panel out to release it from the tabs. Then lift up. Unthread the screws to detach the junction box cover.
Next, unthread the screws securing the junction box itself. Connect the power cord connector to the unit connector. Reinstall the junction box. With the power cord positioned in the notch in the junction box, use a clamp to secure the cord to the base pan with the provided screws. Replace the junction box cover. Have an assistant help you to lift up the unit and slide it into the wall sleeve until the seal rests against the front of the sleeve. Thread the provided mounting screws to secure the unit to the sleeve. Avoid over tightening the screws. If using a sub-base with an electric receptacle, unthread the screws to detach the receptacle cover. Feed the excess power cord into the sub-base, then plug the cord into the electrical outlet. If applicable, replace the receptacle cover on the sub-base. You can now turn the power supply back on, if required. Refer to the manual to determine the proper dip switch and system configuration. Once properly configured, replace the front panel by aligning the tabs over the top rail, then push the bottom of the panel in until it snaps into place. The package terminal air conditioner should now be ready for use. At Repair Clinic, we make fixing things easy. Thank you for supporting the production of these videos by purchasing your parts from our website.